Welcome back, everybody, and thanks for uh, joining us for this um, final uh, uh, set of presentations for the um, last day of the uh, spring 2022 CNI member meetings virtual event. Uh, we have two um, project briefings and uh, then an invited uh, an, an invited presentation. Uh, we will close the session with a couple of brief reflections from um, uh, folks on uh, some of the more interesting or exciting things that they've heard today. So with that, um, and without any further ado, I'm going to welcome um, uh, I'm going to welcome Christopher Gilman and Elizabeth McCauley uh, from uh, the UCLA Library. They are going to talk to us about um, ways to integrate uh, digital collections use into the curriculum. I think you will find some interesting echoes here uh, to some other work that you've heard described at recent CNI meetings, including this one. And uh, thank you for joining us, uh, Christopher and Elizabeth. I'll turn it over to you. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Cliff. Um, I'm Elizabeth McCauley. I'm head of the Digital Library Program at the UCLA Library, the University of California, Los Angeles. And um, I am here with my colleague, Christopher Gilman. I'll let him introduce himself. Hi, Christopher Gilman, Digital Curriculum Program Coordinator with the Digital Library Program at UCLA. Uh, Chris, can you go to the next slide, please? So I'm just going to give a little bit of um, context for um, the presentation that we're going to uh, that Chris is going to give on his his work um, and the accomplishments, but sort of like what was the framing and how was this um, you know positioned is is what I'd like to set out here. So the UCLA Digital Library Program has been around for. Um, uh, about 15 years. Um, it, it started before it was named it, with some digital collections and we are currently um, a fairly large program. There we manage about 280 collections and growing and we have numerous um, sort of named um, collecting programs and, and collection building programs as well as um, just standard um, activities that we, we do to make more um, digital collections available. Uh, currently in those 280 collections, there's about 3.4 million items. Um, and this is just a snapshot from our front page. Um, Chris, next slide, please. Hmm. <laughs> well, it's there somewhere. Um, when it comes up, it'll come up. There we go. Um, so uh, what, the foundation is for the work in connecting to the curriculum is that we really need to have rich um, digital collections that are unique, uh, or we, we tend to emphasize unique. Sometimes they're unique, sometimes they're, they're rare and maybe uniquely available openly or, or in a digital form. Um, I put a lot of emphasis in the program on, on building those collections and making them voluminous so that they become research um, level collections. Uh, but then an uh, equally important foundation is that these materials, when they are digital, that they be um, interoperable. And I sort of split that word out to highlight it a little bit more. Um, I remember learning this when I was in graduate school. That word was hard to to figure out. And then once I figured out what it meant or I had command of the definition, it was in my active vocabulary. I used it a lot um, and it is part of our, our foundation. But uh, what it means is, is still important that across platforms or in an interway, we make things so that they can be operated on. And that's what Chris is going to highlight in this presentation. Um, so we had to have a foundation or a technology solution that allowed for that. Um, and then what I want these collections to be or what we're trying to achieve at, at UCLA is that these these collections are operational, not just in situ, like inside their interface that that my program works to create, 
but that they're also transferable and useful and operable ex situ, which I think you know we'll see in this presentation a little bit more. So we want to get out of the interface, and what I really want to do is see us get into the classroom because our motivation is not just to um, build it and and let it sit there and be indexed by Google, but the real purpose of our our organization, the Digital Library Program, and more writ large, the UCLA Library, is to connect with students and researchers and, um, and make a difference in how they uh, learn, um, how they produce knowledge, and how um, they, they develop in, in creative and, and um, artistic fashion as well. So uh, our, our collections can be useful in um, creative works. Um, Christopher is uh, been tasked with uh, looking at our collections and looking at our campus at UCLA and building a bridge outward from these digital collections, which might be currently or could be conceived as inert, and making them active. Uh, and so that's what I'm going to pass the the mic over to him uh, to to talk about these things. And uh, uh, what I guess to highlight here, what are the goals? Um, I'd like to say that we have hypotheses, um, and that's how we work in the digital library program at UCLA. If we have more collections, we might have more users. If we activate these digital collections, they might get used more in classrooms, and then we take action, and then we evaluate. So these are our hypotheses that, that through the work that we're doing with connecting um, to students and curriculum, we can make a bigger impact on our campus. And I will turn it over to Christopher for real. Great. Um, so, uh, so I'll give you a quick overview. I'll try to move quickly through material. Um, uh, and I've uh, also used um, the visual register as much as possible. Um, so you get a sense for what we're doing, e even if um, uh, some of the words uh, have to be hurried. Um, so I'm going to talk in three parts, um, talk about Canvas itself as a medium. So in this sense, Canvas uh, is a learning management system, not to be confused with Canvas on a triple IF um, uh, uh, viewer. Um, uh, I'm going to um, uh, showcase our um, custom three unit template um, that we developed. That's the frame um, that, uh, that we refer to in the title. Um, and give you um, some uh, uh, some information about our experience this winter um, deploying it for the first time, um, and then uh, and then give some uh, summary uh, feedback from the student experience uh, with this um, uh, with this project. Um, so first, about Canvas uh, uh, as a medium. Um, so. Um, we embarked on this project uh, as part of a uh, wholesale um, shift at UCLA from a Moodle-based learning management system uh, to, uh, to Canvas. And the comments that I'm making uh, today um, don't um, presuppose that Canvas is necessarily what one should use uh, at, at any institution as a learning management system, but rather the learning management system itself uh, is a uh, is an excellent medium uh, for uh, managing and negotiating uh, student learning with digital collections in the classroom. Um, the fact that we are transitioning uh, meant that the entire university is suddenly thinking about learning management as well as innovate, innovation uh, in teaching and learning. Um, so, um, just for inspiration, um, I'm uh, pulling from Vesalius's um, famous uh, anatomy. Um, in part because I think that student learning is embodied um, and also uh, as a, a, a kind of visual metaphor for um, introducing our uh, three unit template and related uh, curriculum. So the template itself uh, is designed to integrate um, digital engagements um, through exploration of the collections, um, analysis um, and um, public project work as essentially plugins into a standard um, uh, university course. So we've created a, a kind of a graphic representation in the homepage 
um, with the main body of weekly topics, um, in our case, in quarters and 10 weeks, um, and then units devoted um, uh, pretty rigorously to uh, materials, methods, and products in that sequence. So this is a relatively fixed sequence. Um, uh, one could, of course, uh, change it in, in the template. These are all variable in implementation, but we found that this is a, a pretty helpful structure. So uh, one, I, I just want to highlight something about um, sort of the affordances of a digital um, a, a page structure in Canvas. And that is the distinction between verbal communication um, and visual communication. So in this case, let's think of verbal communication in the simple form of a rhyme, where two things that have very little to do with each other, presumably, um, suddenly find um, some uh, sound um, uh, symmetries um, between them, a cat and a, and a mat. Um, and if you apply that to, um, to visual content, you can see that there are also uh, opportunities for essentially visual rhymes or juxtaposition of similar imagery um, that may come from very disparate sources. Um, and in our case, um, uh, as uh, Lisa has essentially um, uh, set us up um, to, to consider, we, we are active participants in the um, IIIF community and our, and our collections are in IIIF for the most part. Um, and content in IIIF can be um, sourced um, and dropped into a, a viewer alongside content drop um, from uh, another source, in this case, uh, Library of Congress. So we see the Codex Amiatinus on the left um, and the Gladzor Gospels from our own collection on the, on the right. Um, and uh, in this, we have not only juxtaposition, but we have the, the ability to deeply zoom and explore and, and, um, and change pages and so forth um, and use the human eye as a tool for inquiry. And this really wouldn't be possible without these advanced digital technologies and systems. So um, comparative analysis um, uh, of details as you start to see these items uh, together um, is central to a process of, of, of inquiry. And um, with our learning management system, we can embed a viewer such as Mies in this case through very simple HTML directly into the Canvas page and have students engage with it in their course context. So here is a, a sample page <clears throat> from a live course. Um, and in so doing, we essentially create a kind of longitudinal cascading effect where content can be pulled uh, from our uh, origin site into the learning management system through a sequence of uh, activities and then uh, essentially taken outside into public viewing in a completely different context. In this case, a student produced a uh, scalar uh, project. Okay. So that was the, the sort of principle and now the actual experience um, working with uh, one professor, Chen Ling Liu Zilioni, um, who is teaching simultaneously um, in the history department and Institute for Society and Genetics. <clears throat> so she used the, the, um, the template in two parallel courses that were highly symmetrical themselves. Only one course derived its content from our collections um, the collection of patent medicine trade cards on the left and the um, society and genetics course drew material from the UCLA herbarium. All other respects are very similar. So in each case, um, in, in her uh, implementation, uh, the course topics um, in the 10 week sequence covered um, principal themes that she would have taught in a previous course, irregular medicine, history of pain and public health. Um, I only know about those um, passingly now. Um, for the materials, she pulled in a, a collection of, of uh, these extraordinary ephemeral objects, patent medicine trade cards. Um, in, uh, for the methodology of the, of the class, students focused on comparative analysis and annotation. 
um, and use uh, group setting for collaborative evaluation of their annotations. And this is preparatory work for um, the otherwise relatively daunting um, uh, technical and proficiency um, uh, uh, sort of um, uh, skill sets needed for a, a, a scalar project. Okay, so here is an example of the, the sort of weekly rundown of the, um, uh, of the uh, Canvas site um, for uh, unit uh, one. Uh, she and I worked very directly with uh, Russell Johnson, the curator of these collections, also um, worked both online and with digital, with physical materials. Um, and that focus allowed them to dig deep into um, uh, the information literacies component, particularly the value of this information. Um, for the second, um, they focused on uh, observation, interpretation, annotation um, uh, as communication. And uh, as you see on the right, these, uh, these activities, this is just one of, of many activities in unit two where students did hands-on digital work um, and then were assessed on their proficiencies. And then in the third, students focused on uh, writing for the public, um, visual rhetorics, um, and um, took everything that they had learned in the previous two units um, and, um, and created a summative uh, work product that could be assessed both for content and for proficiencies. Okay, so how did the students like this? Um, first, um, we had an extraordinary number of students who just simply said this was their favorite class. And I, I pulled in some quotations from comments that the students left with us. Um, uh, all around, um, it was just a great experience. Um, there were um, uh, all, all, all cylinders firing, Scalar worked. Um, the professor was great. Um, patent medicine trade cards were good. Um, uh, again, um, great class, um, another great class. And um, notably, um, the most memorable experience for me this quarter was the trip to the biomedical library and seeing, um, seeing these items in real life and working with the, with the curator. So that connection between the digital and the physical um, is a really strong. And we think that this, this approach can actually enhance the way students see physical um, materials. Okay, with the digital collections, um, we saw what we had hoped and what Lisa sort of set us up uh, as, a, as a goal. And that is students saw these things for the first time. Many of them were upper division students. Um, uh, they were blown away by how many items they were looking at um, and the quality and um, uniqueness and just general interest. Um, and that they'd made their, their way through four years um, sometimes of an education and had no idea that this, this, um, this treasure was sort of hidden under a bushel. And so forth. So on the three unit um, structure, um, what students largely said was that they did a lot of work, but it was manageable because it was scaffolded um, and had uh, frequent touch points with the professor. Anything they were confused about, they had uh, redundancy in the uh, online instruct instructions and the professor um, filling in gaps or explaining things uh, along the way. Um, every item that the students learned um, uh, was followed up in subsequent units um, and they fit together in a, in a kind of an integral whole. Um, students um, uh, learn things that they, um, uh, that they hadn't anticipated before um, and had great things to say about Canvas itself uh, as a tool. Okay. Um, in addition, we um, intentionally structured in uh, the ACRL information framework for information literacy in a, in a, a series of the particular frames and had students reflect upon the frames as they are moving through their learning. 
And particularly, um, uh, we underscored information has value in the context of ephemeral items uh, in uh, uh, the physical and, and digital collections. Um, and the, the um, presentation by uh, the curator, Russell Johnson, um, uh, really kind of um, uh, struck the students um, in where things are accessed, um, that they had been originally discarded, um, how they were collected and so forth. Um, students learned scalar um, quickly and effectively um, through this uh, approach. Uh, overwhelmingly, they liked the medium um, and uh, they felt like the digital skills generally, both with scalar and other things like HTML um, and uh, linked media were things that they could apply in other contexts, both within and outside of the, of the, um, uh, of the school. Um, the particular affordances of the um, high quality IIIF content. Um, and then uh, we worked, uh, uh, both professors Zilioni and, and, and I worked with the students um, to consider what they would suggest uh, for future iterations. Um, uh, we have already made some adjustments to our model, but um, this is a live and, and iterative process. Um, and uh, essentially being adaptable to the, um, to the contingencies of the moment um, uh, gave the professor a lot of positive um, feedback. Okay, so the, the, the bottom line for many courses um, uh, comes in the course evaluations and having seen commentary, we, we anticipated that they would be um, uh, pretty good. Um, what we found is that in these two parallel running courses, that there is a kind of a, a symmetry as well in the student responses, which suggests that the, um, that the model is itself um, a coherent and replicable um, uh, from, uh, from one context to the next. Um, the evaluations uh, were high and they were significantly higher than the same courses taught by Professor Zilioni in previous semesters. So even if you account for uh, her excellence as a, as a professor, um, the big difference uh, was uh, in the course structure itself and the materials. Um, notably, students' uh, interest in the subject matter increased significantly as a function of the course. Um, and although the um, uh, much was achieved in the course in the mastery, um, the difficulty was uh, below average um, and, the, uh, and the workload was just about right. So from this, um, we have a couple of takeaways. Uh, one is that the LMS does effectively integrate collections into the curriculum, um, that digital and physical collections work better together than they do separately, um, that structure such as the three unit template helps faculty innovate in their curriculum and manage um, uh, the intensity of the work, um, and that students uh, themselves learn valuable skills and really like the experience. So uh, with that, um, we, can, uh, we can wrap up. I just wanted to um, point out that this is um, really part of a, a much larger um, a, a soft collaboration with a variety of different uh, 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 people and, um, and sub-institutions within the, the university, um, some of whom know they're contributing, some of them um, uh, might not be all that aware. Um, but uh, our hope is that the work that we're doing has wide application um, and can be scaled up to uh, um, a, a broad implementation. Thank you, and we can take any questions. Thank you. This is really um, these are these are wonderful outcomes. Um, uh, it's great. It's great to see this. Um, there are several comments and. Um, 
perhaps questions in the chat that you might want to have a quick look at. Um, meanwhile, um, for other folks, uh, please um, share your questions either in the chat or just jump in. So I'm, I'm looking at the um, at the chat from the bottom up. Um, our outreach strategy and how many courses per quarter could you handle? Um, it's a it's a great question. Um, I should um, I should contextualize this uh, a little to say that a, a parallel project um, underway is to create uh, reusable uh, modular content for sharing on our uh, UCLA Canvas Commons. Um, and by that means to scale up um, the number of, of courses that, that can be supported. Uh, right now, we're, uh, we're in a, a very intensive phase of uh, trying out how the, the systems uh, all work and what kind of responses we get from the, from the students. Um, generally, we're the, in, in terms of scale, uh, because this, uh, the three unit um, template uh, uh, presupposes buy-in from the uh, from the outset by a faculty member. Um, it's a, I'd say, a, a small to large minority of of courses uh, that would be a maximum uh, uh, implementation. Not every not every professor uh, is uh, is interested in um, in that that kind of wholesale uh, commitment to this to this type of teaching and learning. On the other hand, um, it is intended um, for any type of course, and the, the numbers, in this case, the two courses that we're looking at were, I'd say, in the mid-range of uh, 60 to 80 students, and we've run parallel um, uh, curriculum in courses as large as 300. Um, so the, the absolute number of students can be relatively high um, in, in this model. The number of courses is, a, is another question. Um, uh, uh, we won't know that I think until until we've uh, we've taken this um, I'd say another uh, another year uh, of implementation. Um, uh, and as for the the outreach strategy itself, it um, it has been connected with the um, what is called the LMS transformation effort um, at UCLA. Um, uh, through uh, networking and departments, um, our um, our various um, uh, instructional support and research units, such as digital humanities, um, HumTech, uh, and uh, and others that have uh, connections with faculty who are interested and willing to try out these kinds of um, these kinds of approaches, um, and with the Center for um, uh, Advancement of Teaching, uh, which uh, reaches the um, uh, reaches the full campus. Um, let's see. I wonder if you played a role at all in assessment of student learning outcomes. Um, uh, that's from Tara Lynn Fulton. Um, uh, the, uh, we have not done a formal assessment of, uh, of, of the students. Um, uh, we did um, ha run a parallel project with the Center for Advancement of, uh, of, of Teachers, um, but I, I, I wouldn't be able to, um, to communicate that here. Um, uh, Daniel Chamberlain, um, scholarly primitives, casting the students as active scholars, connecting established modes of inquiry with modern uh, multidisciplinary methods. Um, uh, Excellent comment. Um, uh, the students are very um, uh, in, engaged and empowered, and particularly through the sequence of, of three units, many of them uh, were not, um, I'd say, particularly comfortable with the material, the, the, the methods, or the technologies uh, involved, and uh, by the end um, uh, seemed quite confident. Um, and took charge of their own uh, of their own project work. Uh, 
Great. Any others? Well, looks like we're about ready to uh, move on to the next presentation. Um, thank you so much for sharing that work. Um, uh, you've obviously um, uh, really made an impression with it, and it's uh, really wonderful to see it. So thank you so much for joining us and sharing that work.